Hey folks, I'm doing another video here on uh, War Room 2nd Edition. This is going to be the setup uh, video um, that basically just it should be probably pretty brief. Um, uh, well, maybe not. I might go through the actually set up everything here and then uh, we can go from there. Um, uh, or do a full, I can't do a full setup because I don't have the full map. But uh, okay, anyways. <clears throat> Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to set your map out. You're going to choose a scenario. Um, <clears throat> I'm partially set up for the war in Europe uh, scenario here. I do need, uh, technically, if I was going to play this scenario, there's I need this map section over on this side to fill out Russia. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just not going to do that. It, this is going to provide me enough to be able to set up excuse me, set up the map, um, and uh, kind of go over things. Uh, so uh, then you're going to have to assign nations. So each scenario will tell you which nations are participating in uh, the battle. Um, in this uh, scenario for uh, Northern, or for uh, the, the War of Europe, uh, you're going to have uh, the United States, you're going to have Great Britain, you're going to have Russia, you're going to have Germany, and you're going to have Italy. Uh, Japan and China are not involved in this battle. Um, there are a couple things that you're going to want to give to each player. You are going to... Let me get all this over here and, and set up real quick. I should have done this ahead of time. switch over here all right you're going to want to give each player their omp chart you're going to want to give each player their um, command box with their pegboard to track resources um, after you do that um, all their all their all their stuff is going to be in this um, in this box all their commands their flag tokens their jumbo flag tokens and they're going to have uh, they're going to have these uh, pegs to, to use with the pegboards um, so each player is going to get that, and then <clears throat> you're going to want to create a, uh, you're going to want to pull out the unit box that has all the different units, kind of set that aside for, for general supply. You're going to want to uh, pull out the common unit box, which has the metal, civilian goods, uh, bombing and industry tokens, hotspot tokens, and the submarine um, convoy uh, destruction tokens from the nano expansion um, you're going to want to have your dice out as well somewhere and you're going to want to give each uh, player a their sleeve of cards um, and you're going to want to make sure the starting cards are in there and no additional cards each scenario will tell you what um, the territories are in play uh, for each of the nations. Um, not all of the territories are going to be in play for every scenario unless you're playing the global war scenario. Um, Self-explanatory, I suppose. Um, so, then, <clears throat> I'll set this over here. All right, we did the OMP chart. We did the resource charts. We gave you the boards. You're going to want to set out your morale board and your and one of the battle one or two of the battle boards. Um, your morale board. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that it is on the proper side. So uh, you have your morale board here. Uh, this is the morale board. Uh, the silver side is the one for North Africa war in Europe or war in the Pacific. So we're doing war in Europe, or at least this this video is set up for war in Europe. Uh, so this is the side we'll use. Alternatively, the other side is for the global game or just the Eastern Front, uh, which is literally just Germany, uh, Italy, and Russia, um, and Great Britain. Um, so we would use this side of the board. Um, and I'm just going to set this off to the side for right now. 
and then you'll want to have one of your battle boards set up somewhere or easily available. These are double sided depending on whether you're doing a sea battle or a land battle. Um, the board and the dice. Then each player is going to take their uh, command box here. So let's switch back over here. Uh, we're going to take our command box. We're going to pop this open. And we're going to look through our commands. So our starting territories. Uh, this is where you're going to go to your cards. You're going to pull your card, one of your cards out here. So this is uh, Greater Germany. And if you flip it over, on the back side of this card, uh, this indicates uh, that this uh, uh, country is embattled right now. Uh, if it were to be on this side, uh, which means it's going to produce less. Um, you'll see that on this side it produces one oil, two iron, and three uh, OSR. And on this side it's just the two iron and the three OSR. There's no oil being produced. So if you're battling in uh, Great Germany or Greater Germany, they are not going to be able to produce oil. Uh, but down here at the bottom, this is what we uh, want to look at. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a closer up here. There we go. Uh, you'll see your starting units for this uh, for this territory. So in A5, you're going to have two of the uh, escorts and one submarine. That's going to be um, the first uh, command um, stack. And then you're going to have um, in actually in Greater Germany itself, you're going to have uh, one stack of air units. That's the 11th uh, command, and that's going to be one a bomber and two fighters. And then you're going to have a land um, or a surface uh, command, which is the 48th, and that's going to be two armor, two artillery, and three infantry. So each player is going to take a look at their starting cards like that, and what they're going to do is, uh, well, let's look at... Um, We'll do the naval ones first. So here's the command, the first command. You'll see A5, it's got it, so that's where it's going to start. And then at the bottom, it shows you what units it's actually uh, starting with. Uh, so let's. I'm just going to switch over here, or, or quickly go over here. And we'll build this command stack real, real fast. So here is the command stack being is built now for uh, this set of units come on or for this command focus uh, maybe not you'll see uh, that the command token goes on top then we have the two escorts and the one um, submarine and that's denoted down there at the bottom and so this will go in a5 so we'll switch back up here to our board here's a5 and we'll just kind of set it out on the board like like so and I know that's pretty zoomed out and, and, and pretty far. I'll try to get a, a better close-up video here in a moment once I get all these uh, pieces placed. Uh, but each each uh, player is basically going to do the same thing. They're going to go through their cards. They are going to um, put out their starting units. Um, there are some optional quick play rules where you don't actually... Um, put the individual unit pieces out on the board. You just put the command tokens out. And then when they engage in their first movement or their first battle, then you put the actual tokens out. It's supposed to, excuse me, it's supposed to speed up play a little bit, um, but it does not look nearly as impressive as having all the units out. So we're not going to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll do one more here. So here's, uh, this is for Denmark. You'll see uh, the 38th land unit, or 38th command there. They're going to have one armor, one uh, artillery, and two uh, infantry. Um, oh, I actually still have to do the other side for Greater Germany. I forgot about that. Uh, so if we'll do the air, we have the 11th air. So we go looking through our air tokens here. There's the 11th, and there's the command. They start in, it, it shows a little G1. If I could get that to focus there, it did for a minute. It did for a minute. There we go. You'll see it says G1, and then on the left side it shows you what's actually in there. So we have one bomber and two fighters. So I will flip over here. I will get one bomber. I will get two fighters. And I have that stack, and that's going to go into G1, which is here. Um, then 
we also have uh, some uh, land units, and that's the 48th Land Command. Where is it? Where is it? Is that it? There it is. I see it. G1. Okay, and we have... Um, we're going to have three infantry. We're going to have... Two artillery and two armor. So, I'll show you this stack here real quick. So this is <clears throat> this is the forty eighth land command. Let me get that to focus a little bit more, a little bit better. There we go. And on the right there, you can see it. That's all the units that it's in it. So we'll kind of slide it over here. Um, you'll see that we got the command token on top. Then we have the armor or the uh, artillery. Then we have the infantry. And then at the bottom, we have the um, uh, armor. Actually, I have that reversed. That should be... It doesn't matter, but there is a... Um, I think Nightingale mentioned this on their site or one of the videos they were doing possibly. Um, this was the uh, other players have recommended it uh, be in this order for land uh, combats or for land units. <clears throat> you put your uh, armor on top and you put your artillery on the bottom. The reason you do this is because none of the uh, territories are colored blue for land so it helps us stand out a little bit more i believe uh, they refer to this technique as the mustard sandwich uh, technique uh, so you're always going to have your infantry units in the middle there uh, so that's going to go out on to greater germany that stack and i'll flip it over there so we have the infantry here we have the air and then we have the sea that uh, for uh, greater germany uh, so that is the greater germany card and then um, we'll do Denmark here real quick. And that was a 38th land command. There it is. And it's going to get one armor, two infantry, and one artillery. And it will go out into Denmark, which is G2, which is right here. Uh, so basically, each player is going to do that. Um, they're going to go through their starting countries. They're going to uh, compose their units, put their units out on the board. Alternatively, if uh, somebody is hosting your, your game um, <clears throat> and they're a, a nice person, uh, they could potentially set all this up ahead of time so that uh, when we sit down and play um, you just have to grab your stuff and go and all your units are already out there on the board and you're not having to fiddle around with it but um, that may it also means that you're not if you're putting out your own units you're gonna kind of remember maybe what they were I mean you can look at them and pretty easily tell what what's there but it, you know, it just adds that little more bit of a connection, I guess, to, you know, the units that you're going to put out. <clears throat> uh, but anyways, so each player is going to do that. And I'm going to finish that off screen um, uh, to get ready for the next section where I talk about the different phases. Um, but that's pretty much going to complete setup. After that, uh, the game is ready to go and you're ready to start playing um, after everybody gets all their units out on the board, um, etc. So I'm going to... Uh, through the magic of pause and resume, I'm going to pause the video, set everything up, and then I will resume. Uh, and then I'll try to get some close-ups as well, uh, so you can kind of see how this looks out on the board and how impressive it looks. So, give me one second to get all this done. And just like that, the game is set up. Um, for the most part, like I said, um, the 
other part of the map that's over there, um, I didn't set up the Russian forces, or there's still additional British forces that would be set up um, for some uh, territories that they control that, that aren't out on the board. Um, but this is the map set up with all the pieces uh, to that point. Um, I am going to switch over here so you can see... Um, there are some commands left over, and these are commands you can use to split um, your your command. So if you want to split a force out into two separate commands, you do have your spare commands here, and there's a one spare piece for each uh, thing. Um, but most of the commands you can see were, were in use. Uh, you are limited to the commands that you have in your boxes, though, so... Um, You can't, you know, split unlimited commands, basically. Um, none of the uh, flag tokens are put out uh, to start because uh, all of the uh, countries are color-coded uh, to who they belong to at the start of the game. <clears throat> um... That being said, let's switch back over here, and uh, let's see if I can't get a little bit of a close-up here. Actually, before I do that, um, one additional thing that the players need to do is put their uh, starting resources. Uh, we are doing the European campaign, um, or, or the War in Europe campaign, so that's the E. So it just uh, for the Germany, it just so happens that it corresponds with the global campaign, which is the um, filled in corner. So uh, these are the resources that uh, Germany starts with um, at the start of the war in Europe campaign. Uh, the white resource stays off board. Uh, that is to indicate if, if somebody reaches 20 and then they go over, um, you would put the, the white peg at the top um, or rather probably the uh, colored peg at the top and then um, put the white peg coming up through here to determine I think let me look and let me look and make sure about that first I'm sure that is in here somewhere But I can't find it at the moment. So one way, either you use, either you you would use the red peg at the top and then use the white peg to count additional, or you'd put the white peg at the top and use the red uh, peg to count um, further. I, I tend to think you would probably use the the red, blue, or yellow pegs and put them at the top, and then use the white peg to uh, include additional. Anyway, either way. Um, now let's switch over here, and now let's see if I can get you a close-up. All right, so <clears throat> here's kind of a little bit of a close-up of the of the uh, Europe. Uh, you'll see all these massive stacks of uh, units that are out here. Um, so here's kind of what it would look like, uh, not such a high bird's-eye view of everything. Um it is very impressive and very impressive looking. Um, so additionally, um, uh, we will need to look over at the um, the uh, round and the um, homeland track here. Um, but basically each player is going to just place their tokens out there um, well, here, let me switch to it, and I'll show you. All right, so here we are with the um, or turn order track. So basically, each player will uh, uh, put their nation flag up here, their jumbo nation flag. And then each uh, player will also put their uh, jumbo nation square flag up here in the homeland uh, status. Um, 
and this is where you're going to uh, count your basically your stress, how how well your homeland's doing around this track, and then turn order will be determined after the bidding um, in phase one, uh, and that is my next step. So uh, we're I'm going to stop this. This was the um, setup video. I'm going to stop this video here, and I'm going to do a phase one video, maybe phase two, maybe they'll be in two videos there. Um, uh, and, and we'll go from there in terms of the different phases of the game. So thanks for watching and uh, check out uh, the next video uh, where we dive into the start of the actual game. This was still just set up. Thanks for watching.